As promised, here is the review for the Blackmagic Intensity Shuttle, the Thunderbolt version. And um, as you can see, there's only one Thunderbolt port on this device, which makes it extremely annoying, to be quite honest. Uh, Thunderbolt is meant to be daisy chained, and having just a one in on this device means that most Mac computers will only be able to use this as an input capture card and pretty much nothing else. This is the end of the line seeing as they don't make hubs for Thunderbolt at this point in time. There's a signal on the television. What that is, it's one of my DVD recorders in there. It's actually second from the bottom um, and it's running straight into the television with the HDMI television picks up the signal from the HDMI cable straight away so let's see if we can be as lucky when we take the HDMI cable out of the television and put it into our black magic card okay let's see how we go okay so that's set up there and then on my laptop one of the annoying things as well about this black magic is it's got a piece of software that allows you to um, capture the, the video signals, but you've actually got to go into the system preferences as well to change um, the Blackmagic um, inputs. So at the moment we've said that we've got the HDMI coming in, so we'll call it HDMI video and HDMI audio. And at this point in time I'll just keep it to PAL because I've been having luck with that working. Um, I'll, I'll explain that a bit more later. Um, I've just started up the Blackmagic Media Express program and you've also got to go into the preferences here. Yep, annoying. And make sure that that's set to PAL and I'll use this time um, a codec. Let's use the DVC Pro 50 and close that. Now let's go and have a look at login capture. No, nothing there. Can't see anything there. That's annoying. Um, as you could see before, the television picked up that. So, we've got the S video coming out and into the television. So let's try that same signal with the black magic. We'll pull out the HDMI and we'll look for S video in and we'll put the S video in like that, like so. And Let's see what we can get on our black magic with the S video login capture. We'll go into the system preferences. God, this is annoying. Um, and we put on the S video and we'll change it to, let's start with PAL again, S video and PAL. And then we'll go to the Media Express preferences. We'll change that to PAL so that it all matches up and let's see what we get. Alright, so we can see S video. When I saw that it had outs on it, I thought, oh, how exciting. I'll be able to use it like a, a second monitor, you know, an output to my second monitor. But no such luck, that's not how it works. You've got actually got to have software that. Um, that responds to this thing like for instance in After Effects or Premiere if you're using that it's not like having a second window that you can drag um, drag windows into and stuff like that or a second monitor that you can drag windows in it's basically just an output monitor um, in when you're using it in Premiere and um, there's only a few pieces of software that actually recognize this thing um, it, like for instance if you're VJing and you want to have a camera in um, and then play with it and put in a different output that doesn't work it, it won't do that now at the bottom we've got an old VHS video player okay so we've got a video here it's playing into the television okay great so this video should work again right it worked last time so it should work again this time exactly the same theoretically so in we go the S video worked on the DVD player. Did you see? I'm not sure if you saw that flickering there. Just for a moment, it recognized a bit of a video. Saw it there for a second. 
And then I'll fast forward through a bit. Press play. No, <laughs> no cigar. Did you see that? It flashed. Oh, there's a frame, there's a frame. Let me explain why. Apparently, this DVD, uh, the VHS player, um, needs a time base corrector to correct the video before it's even going to work. I mean, you'd expect this thing to come out of the box and be able to recognize a normal VHS video player, right? I mean, that's what it's for, right? No such luck. You're going to have to go and buy an additional piece of equipment, a time-based corrector, just to play your videos. You can actually use the commercial DVD player like a time-based corrector. It has sort of basic time-based corrector stuff built in. So through experimentation, I have actually been able to record the VHS video, but I have to route it through my DVD recorder first and then send the output from the DVD recorder into the card before it will recognize that signal. Well, I've got some old video cameras. Maybe, you know, there's some family movies that I want to save from, um, from being, you know, fading away and so record this on it. So how's this thing with just a nice, like, a composite signal going into it? And uh, how does it pick it up? Let's have a look. Just bear with me while I plug this thing in. Let's see if we get... Okay, beautiful. There's a signal. And let's see, it's up on, the, um, up on the big screen. And so now, we'll just test that same signal. Put the camera down here. And we'll put that same signal that just went into the television successfully into the video in the um, composite there on the card and let's see if we have any luck with that so again we need to go into the system preferences and check the black magic design driver is set to uh, composite video and analog in and it's set to PAL and we go into the Black Magic Media Express and we can see it's already seeing something there just make sure, yep, that's set to PAL and what have we got? I think that you're pretty familiar with this scenario now flashing frames um, I can run it through my DVD player and that acts as a time-based corrector and then I can get a decent signal but the, the need to have to do that is completely frustrating to be quite honest 